This video is sponsored by Envato, a great all-around video asset resource for video editors. I was scrolling through Instagram the other day, kind of noticed some of these edits from time to time where there's like this one little mistake kills the entire video for me, which really sucks because I see a lot of really good filmmakers out there and their cinematography is on point and their sound design is just amazing. But some of these editing mistakes, they're just killing these videos and not just beginner editors. These are mistakes that I even see seasoned filmmakers of 10 years or more making. Without further ado, here are the top five mistakes that beginner editors make. Dialogue volume, too low. Just in general, your sound mix really needs to be on point. You have to set your levels correctly so you make sure that your audience can actually hear the things that are important in a video. If you haven't played around with audio, it can seem a little overwhelming, but luckily for online video, there are a couple of key guidelines that you can follow. Now, these are not to be confused with like broadcast standards if you're doing commercial for broadcast work or something for a distributor, but if you're shooting travel films for here on YouTube, or shooting client work that's gonna end up on social media. These are generally really good guidelines to stick to. For your music levels, anything that you're gonna use as like an underscore for your film, you're gonna wanna set that between negative 18 decibels and negative 25 decibels. For your dialogue, you want that between negative six decibels and negative 12 decibels. For your sound effects, you're gonna want that between negative 12 decibels and negative 18 decibels. And your overall mix should end up somewhere between negative three decibels to negative six decibels. The general rule is just you wanna get it close to zero decibels, but you never want to exceed zero decibels. Anything above this is clipping and it'll possibly hurt your viewer's ears. So during the loudest parts of your video or really any part of your video, you wanna make sure it is never going above zero decibels. Despite levels, it's really always good just to kind of give a listen to your mix. If you have professional speakers and a full audio workstation, then that's awesome. You can check your audio on that without any issues. If you don't, you may wanna export it, put it onto your mobile phone, put it onto a TV like Chromecast it or something like that, just to make sure all of your levels sound good, you can hear your characters really well or your voiceover or whatever you may have, and just make sure everything is coming through clearly. The second mistake I see a lot in edits are unmotivated fades and transitions. The worst thing that you can really do as an editor is to create a feeling and then to take your audience out of that feeling through wildly misplaced transitions and fades both in and out. Something that I like to try to do as an editor is to find out what is motivating my transition or my fade. Is it my character or is it an objective or subject in the video that I'm trying to really create this feel around. And if I'm gonna be using these transitions, I wanna make sure that I'm using it around one of those elements. Take for example, I use a music track and I have a really cool build up and I'm trying to build the tension in the edit and I'm getting my audience really excited about the big drop in the track, but I'm giving away all of my really good transitions before I even hit the drop. Now it's not gonna really flow that well after that drop comes and I'm using the same transitions afterwards. So things to keep in mind would be not to be using using everything right up front and really feel out the music and the flow of your video before throwing a bunch of those transitions in there. What is the feeling that you're creating? Then you want to make sure that it is all motivated and it's all tied to some element in your video. And number three, text that blends way too much with the background. My biggest pet peeve and probably one of the bigger mistakes that you can make as an editor or graphics maker. This is something you want to keep in mind. I have no idea why people would use a white font against a really bright background without like a drop shadow or something like why like you can't see it it bothers me big time it's one of my biggest pet peeves so in order to really make your font mix well with your video there are two things that I like to keep in mind with this the first thing you want to do is look at the background color of your video there are ways to blend your font and your video and masterful ways to do it using color concepts to really make it blend the proper way color concepts are known in the filmmaking world as tools that you can use to really bring in color and tell a story through color so one of the ways that we could use it as an editor along your color palette is to go by these color concepts. The first would be complementary colors. This is when you have two opposite colors on a color wheel. This is actually where we get the orange and teal LUT from because they're on opposite sides of the color wheel. They complement each other very well when mixed together. So we can actually use a color that's opposite on the color wheel and still maintain a really good color palette and a really clean look to our video. We could also use the triadic color concept, which will actually create a triangle on your color wheel and allow you to pick from several different colors that will work well together. Another is the Anogalus color concept. Anogalus? Anogalus? 
this color concept. This actually allows you to blend several different shades together. So you can take just a certain area of a color wheel and actually make something really nice together that will blend. And just as an extra bonus tip, I don't really go full saturation when it comes to my font colors. Usually when I'm picking my font color in the Adobe Color Picker for my font, I desaturate it a little bit just using this little tool here. It's really easy and personally kind of looks a little bit better and it blends better with my style. And of course, if you're still having trouble making your font really blend well with your background after all of these other concepts, you can also use a drop shadow. You can change the harshness on it to make it a little bit softer if you want to blend a little bit more with the background and be less present, or you can make it really sharp to have a nice stylistic look to it. The other thing about making text fit is to pick an appropriate font for the video that you're making. Personally, I'm a big fan of actually collecting individual fonts and experimenting with them in my travel films and different types of edits that I'm making. And just using your pre-installed fonts are okay. Personally, I use Futura for just about every single video that I have on this channel. And I sprinkle in a couple of other fonts that I've collected over time to really push myself as an editor to get a different look. So for the purposes of this mini tutorial, I'm actually gonna head over to this video sponsor, Envato, to find a font. They have over 7,000 different types of fonts on their site, but I've already looked this one up earlier called Cool Kids that I really wanna try out. It's a trendy script font that you can use for like a high energy travel film or even a vintage look. After I download my font, I'll just quickly install it on my computer. I'm using a Mac, so I'll just use font book. I just drag and drop it right into my font book library. Open up Premiere, type my text over my image, change the font to the font that I just downloaded. And just a side note, you may have to restart Premiere if you had it open when you were installing your font or it might not show up. What's really cool about just picking any kind of font that you want, you can still customize it further once you get it into your editing program. Like we talked about adding a drop shadow earlier. So I can just easily do this, just add a drop shadow. I might sharpen that up a little, increase the distance from it a little. And I may even want to add a skew to this just to kind of spice it up a little bit. So I'll go into my effects, I'll search for transform. I'll drag that onto my text layer. After I do that, I'll go down to skew and I'll just toss a negative 10 skew on this. And that'll be the look that I'm going for. So as you see, it's actually pretty easy to take a font, change the color on it, change the skew on it, drop shadow, and really make it our own, really tailor it to the video that we're creating. The Cool Kids font, I actually have a link below where you can check it out and try it for one of your edits if you'd like. Now you can license individual fonts as you go along and need different types of fonts, or you can check out their new Envato Elements subscription that gives you access to over 7,000 of their different fonts in their library and over 17,000 templates. So make sure to check that out. I highly recommend it if you're creating on a platform like this and it's less than $17 a month. So that's actually pretty affordable and you'll get a whole library of things that you can use for all of your videos. And I've placed a link below where you can go straight to the Envato Elements page and check that out. Moving on to number four is low bitrate export. You spend all this time making these cuts, adding the right motion graphics, spending time on the design, and then you export and get pixels. So if you really want to stand out as a pro, you want to make sure that you are exporting properly and you want to export at the right bit rate according to your timeline to avoid missing those little details in your film that matter to your audience. Some platforms like Instagram and YouTube actually have guidelines and recommendations for your bit rate and file sizes. YouTube actually has a chart of recommended bit rates. Keyword is recommended. So you may want to actually take these up a bit for your own purposes. For example, I usually export to YouTube an SDR 24 frames per second 1440p timeline. So according to YouTube, I should be exporting at 16 megabits per second. Although I use a profile of 5.1, which actually covers from HD to 4K for most timelines. And I use a minimum bit rate of 30 megabits per second and a maximum bit rate of 50 megabits per second. So I nearly double YouTube's recommendations because it's no secret that YouTube heavily compresses your work. You wanna make sure that you're actually getting around that and you're representing your film in the highest quality you can. Now in Instagram's case, they actually have maximum file sizes despite your frame rate or dimensions. For videos 10 minutes or less, the maximum size is 650 megabytes or 8.45 megabits per second bit rate. For videos up to 60 minutes, the maximum size is 3.6 gigabytes or 8 megabits per second bit rate. Of course, there are many platforms out there. So regardless of where you upload, you wanna make sure you check their specs against any other platform just to make sure that you're representing your work in the best way you can. Finally, we reach number five, which is probably the biggest sin in editing and filmmaking in general, which is no rhythm to the cut. Cutting in and out of a scene can be epic or it can look like crap. This is a fine line to balance when crafting your video. And I've seen far too often where these cuts just aren't tied to the story or objective of the video at all. An edit should 
flow like a drum beat. It should be steady, it should be on rhythm, it should be purposeful and driven. For this, you have to ask yourself as an editor, what story am I telling? Is this something that needs to be drawn out with slow rhythmic cuts for an emotional video? Or is this something fast paced and hectic that requires all kinds of really quick cuts and crazy transitions? And when it comes to transitions, are they smooth or are they jump cuts? You wanna make sure as an editor to answer these questions, how you wanna make your audience feel. So when you're about to export a video and you think you've finished, watch it through again and try and find the drum beat in it. Try and find the rhythm to it. If you actually find that it doesn't flow well, you might want to go back through those parts where it kind of lags and either change it or cut it out completely. I've been posting Premiere tutorials for several years now. Everything from color grading to travel film transitions and things are getting faster. Video edits are getting snappier. With that said, it's more important than ever to really stand out above the crowd and, and hone your craft and make sure your work is, is good. Because if this is your dream and your passion, then you have to know if you're not holding your craft, you may fall by the wayside. Make sure to employ these tactics so that you're able to actually stand out above the crowd. Make sure to like this video if you learned something. I've been Austin Newman, and until next time, guys, that's a wrap.